All right, guys, I'm going to show you a really cool application for taking screenshots today. Um, I take a lot of screenshots with tutorials, with posting stuff on the internet, with doing all sorts of things. I tend to use screenshots all day long, and I use it at work. I use it for all sorts of things. And so um, I have decided to go out and buy a professional screenshot application. For Mac, the best one I can offer you is Little Snapper. Now, we do have Snagit, which just came out. Um, and that has been a very good program, probably the best one available for Windows, just came out for Mac. And what makes Snagit such a great program is the fact that you can actually organize your screenshots. It goes beyond just taking the screenshot, but actually organizing them and um, helping you edit them. And there's a lot of things you do with screenshots over and over and over again. Obviously very easy to do in Photoshop, but it adds a lot of time because they're not default actions in Photoshop. And so we, things like annotating, highlighting, stuff like that, they just take, it takes five or six steps to do each thing. And it really adds up and makes um, screenshots just a little bit more difficult. Now obviously screenshots have been possible on the Mac. Just hold down Shift Apple 3. Now take a full screen, full screen screenshot or Shift Apple 4. And you can actually just choose the area that you want to screenshot. And you can see it keeps putting this onto the background. So we have these available here, full screen, and then just the part I selected. Now, then I would normally drag this down to Photoshop, open it in Photoshop, and make some edits. What I really like about using Little Snapper, and I'm going to do it right now, is the ability to, first of all, one thing you can't do with the um, built-in Mac applications is take a picture of an entire website. Now I'm going to do that by just using the Safari extension that comes for free. Um, now I'm in Safari, and I can just take a picture of an entire website. Um, add some tags here. A description. And we'll take a snap. Now you can see it's processing up in the icon up here, and then it's going to take a picture real quick. Now sometimes, normally a screenshot would not take this long, but just because it is a um, a website. There's a lot of images to download. And it's now I'm going to show you right now. In my, I'm going to open the little snapper. You're going to see it to begin with. Now this is just a preview of what you can do actually. Um, annotations, adding text, everything. Look how good I can make this. This is again for a tutorial. Now let's go back here. This is what I just took. Little snapper. Um, there you go. I've got the full website all the way down to the bottom and this is in full high definition this looks really good so there we go I got the entire website now saved this is great for developers that want to save a cool website they found for creativity inspiration later um, all sorts of applications you could do this for but it takes a picture of the entire website which is really nice now now it's really easy to annotate it once I've got it here in little snapper I can easily add boxes I can add text callouts. And I can even add arrows. And it's just this easy. Now doing this in Photoshop again would just take too much time. Look how fast I can just add this. And look how great that looks with um, just a few clicks that took me less than 30 seconds. We can add other shapes like circles and this is all non-destructive and what this means is that even if I go back and I have it in here you open another one come back in I can still edit all of these features you can see this actually somehow got in here I could move all these none of its the pixels are never flattened none of that even if I go into crop this image I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just crop up here we're going to crop this. And now we got this image cropped. Now I can actually change the crop at any point. Look at this. I'm going to make this, you know, the crop bigger. Now with Photoshop, once you crop and delete those pictures, you can't go back. The ability to now change the crop and make it bigger is amazing. And then you can even delete the crop altogether. And there we go, there's no crop whatsoever. And again, this is non-destructive. You can always go back on things like crops, adding annotations and stuff like that. Another real quick I want to show you, very useful tool is the blur tool. It's right here. I want to blur out um, all this text, let's say. I just quickly drag over 
And you can see how it just blurred it all out like that. You can even control how much it blurs. If we just want to blur a little bit of it, or we can blur all of it. You can barely see it. So there's a lot of functionality here. Again, it's non-destructive. I could blur it out now, and then come back in later after maybe posting this, and I say, you know what, I don't need to blur that, and I can get rid of it, and the blur's completely gone. Again, that's just what makes it powerful. I use the blur tool a lot. A lot of times you need to hide you know, important information in a screenshot, and with Photoshop, it's not difficult. You create a marquee box, and then go up to a filter, add a Gaussian blur, it opens another dialog box, you choose how much you want and then click OK and it'll do it. But this just makes it so much easier. You just get right to it. Again, another thing is a call out. You can see we can just call out a certain part of this picture. You can even make it more or less dramatic. And it's just like that. Now just like with everything, you can easily delete this. None, nothing is saved. That's the great thing. You can always go back to the original. Now I'm going to go on to a couple other things real quick. Don't want to take up too much of your time. Now, other ways to take, to take screenshots. Everywhere you go in your Mac, you're always going to have up here on the top the ability to open up your little snapper. You can see you can snap any web address from Safari. This does the same thing that I clicked here. And it'll snap the, take a picture of the entire website. You can also open this in Little Snapper. Little Snapper has a browser built in. I'll show you in a little bit. It um, lets you take pictures of, of a website and, um, and do stuff within that. You can take a full screen snapshot like we did with this over here. I'll take that real quick. There you go. Open up a little snapper. And let's go back to our library. And here we've got the whole thing right there. A full screen screenshot. So that's really cool as well. Let's go back again. Show you a little bit more. Now you can also take a time full screen. This is really useful when you're doing things like showing what items to press in a menu. Say I want to show you how to access apple.com through the bookmarks. Let's click time full screen. It does a countdown. I better hurry. Bookmark bar, apple, apple.com. And there we go. It took a screenshot. And now it even shows my cursor. Let's go into a little snapper here. And now it's able to show the menu formation and the, the cursor using little snapper. Really, really cool. Great way to do it. Um, another great feature of little snapper. Now, like I said, I'm trying to hurry. Let's go ahead this time. Let's do a, a snap area. This lets me drag and, um, you know, take a, a picture of a certain area. Do this again. Look, I can even readjust it. One thing I really like. Keep fine tuning this. Now I'm ready. And I just take click the snap button. And I love how it shows me right here the width and the height. There are just so many little features here that make it great. All right, and now you can assume what that's going to look like. I also want to show you the snap window. Now, if you have multiple windows open, I'm actually going to cancel out of this real quick. All right, so now we've got a couple windows open. I just want to show you something. Um, let's go snap window. We can actually take a picture of the windows here. So let's take a picture of this. And look at what happens. Did you notice how I had a window over the top of this window? But when I clicked Snap Window, not only did it not show the background, so I don't have to have my desktop cluttering it, it adds a drop shadow also. And this will be once I save it, it's actually, it'll be a transparent background with this drop shadow, which makes it pop off the screen. The other cool thing is that even though I had that window on top of it, it still was able to see behind it. Let's close it and see what we're looking at again. See how this window was on the top of um, this window right here? Yet it was still able to take a picture of this entire window like this thing wasn't even on top of it. And so that's really cool with the snap window feature is how I can just take a picture of this and not of the entire um, everything else. Again, I could do it with this and then not show any of this. And the other cool thing I really like about this is taking multiple window screenshots. Let's hold down the Apple key, click the first window, and then come over to this new window and I'm going to click that one as well. And now let go. Take the snapshot. Let's take a look at this in Little Snapper. Again, right here, look at what this does. Again, no background, but it took a picture of both windows this time. And look at this cropping. This cropping would be very difficult to be this precise with by just doing it in Photoshop. It's not to say it's difficult, but it's time consuming. Um, and then adding a drop shadow and everything. And this just saves you so much time over anything and you know doing with Photoshop. 
So this does all that and just makes it really easy. Again, ready to annotate right now, so that's cool. So there you go. I think that shows you a pretty good idea of what all you can do in Little Snapper. The last thing I did want to show you is um, the web browser. Come down here in Little Snapper. I've got the Mac Coach opened up. This is, a, again, just like a normal web browser. And I actually have some more capabilities in here. Let's go ahead and click the Snap button. It says Select Part of the Web Page. And you can see how it auto-detects parts of my website. So I can choose parts of the website that I want to take pictures of. Click it. If I do need to change it, I can even you know change it here. And then click Snap. And now I've saved parts of right from this built-in web browser. Um, I've saved parts right to my right here into my document. And of course, this library is fully searchable. Even if you have all these items, you can search through all of them. You have your recent searches located here. You can create smart collections. You can see just stuff I took today was all this. Um, types of screenshots only the web snaps show up. Screenshots photos, I don't have any. You can see how you can easily filter through anything that's been unprocessed, haven't added annotations, or just look at my full document library. So you have all these capabilities. Last thing I want to show you is the ability to upload these. Let's say I want to upload some of this to my, my web server. I come up here to the cloud and you can see I have all these options. Um, I've got J. Curtis FTP, Ember, J. Curtis for Flickr, and then a Mac Coach FTP. I can upload this picture that I have highlighted right to Mac Coach with one click. Obviously, I've already inputted the, the FTP information earlier. Look how fast this is. Now, it automatically shows me the web address, just like that. Um, there's also HTML code I can po paste directly into an HTML page. And this is linked. If you know any HTML here, I can see how it's linked to the full size document. And it'll show the image in that um, thing. So I could simply copy that paste it into my um, HTML document or something if I'm working with that or again I can just visit this web address look at this look how great this looks the quality look how fast that loaded little snapper does an amazing job with all of this um, all of this stuff together really is why I'm giving it five out of five stars it is the best application for screenshots on the Mac it takes advantage of so many Mac technologies and it's got so many cool features the ability um, to upload directly into onto an FTP server of any type or onto Flickr and Ember, which is their um, real Mac software's own photo sharing service. For any for the people that don't have access to you know web servers or anything like that, they have a really good application here, Ember, a really good service I should say, that allows them to do this for free. There's also some pro versions um, available. The ability to search through all these, organize it. This is like iPhoto for your screenshots. There's so many great things here. Um, the speed and um, abilities you have to take screenshots so easily and then to take them and make them ready for the internet or to show off to, to co-worker or any, uh, PowerPoint presentation, anything. It's just so easy and so quick and looks so great that it's just, you. everybody needs to have this. If you use screenshots for anything other than casual use, this is great for you. If you use it for casual use and you can afford the $24.99 price tag, I'd still say jump on this because having this application, you will use it a lot more than you think. That's all I have for you guys today. Um, I really hope you do pick this up. It's a great application and you really can't turn down having it. Best way to take screenshots on a Mac, 5 out of 5 stars. Take a look at Little Snapper from realmacsoftware.com today.